Welcome, everybody. Uh, welcome to Blub Stocks, uh, episode number two. Last week, I had a chance to host my co-worker, co-founder, Dal. Uh, we had a pleasant conversation, and now we are continuing with our podcast. Um, today, I have a chance to talk to an amazing person. Um, this is Scott. He is a lot of things, basically, right? But most of all, especially lately, you are probably most known as a filmmaker. Um, you created kind of a, a, a masterpiece, we could say. I mean, an award-winning documentary. Uh, yeah. We're going to get to it a little bit later. Uh, but yeah, and basically, I mean, the word is yours. Tell us a little bit about yourself in short, and then we're just going to go on with the questions. Sounds good. <clears throat> um, oh, yeah, my name is Scott Klum, and... I am a filmmaker from Colorado, and um, yeah, I'm also on the autism spectrum, or I'm autistic, and yeah, I mean, it just feels good to be where I'm at in my life right now, because as I'm sure we'll talk about a little later, um, life was really hard for a good decade of my life or more, and um to come out where I am today. Um, I've made a longer documentary called Autism One Man's Journey, and that's been in several film festivals and is still continuing to get bigger and bigger. And it just feels really good to get the message out there about late diagnosed autistic people. Um, there's a lot of information out there there's a lot of information out there about children with autism or teenagers with autism, but as you grow up, we kind of become what's known as like the forgotten generation or the lost generation. And um, so I wanted to bring awareness to late diagnosis. And on top of that documentary, I recently created a short film for a film festival called the Disability Film Challenge. and out of 87 films, I won Best Editor, and um, nice. that's just a huge honor, and it feels really good to be recognized as a filmmaker these days, because back when I was in film school and stuff, I mean, I always had a natural talent for film, but I never was given the chance to be in the student show or anything, and then I had to drop out because of my mental health, but to win a big film festival or a film challenge um, without any formal training or anything is awesome. And it just feels yeah. good to be recognized. Yeah, awesome. Um, you've given me like a lot of starting points for like conversation right now, but let's just start at the beginning. You really, you kind of mentioned it already, uh, but like typically like children are diagnosed, like for example, children with autism are diagnosed quite early, right? And the story yeah. with you was not like that. Um, you were diagnosed rather late, right? At the age of 23, if I remember correctly. Uh, yeah. I was diagnosed at 23, almost 24. It was only like a month apart. Okay. And like, how, how does that, like, I mean, it's obviously hard to understand for, um, for other people that don't have the same experience, but how does it, how did it affect you? Like what was, or maybe if you would compare it, what do you think would be different if you would be diagnosed earlier or what kind of a problems you faced because of that fact? So to me, I can see the benefit, the pros and the cons of both. Ah, okay. uh, so there are pros. You Yeah. So okay. like for me, I can see the pro of not being diagnosed till later because I just never knew I was autistic growing up. So it gave me a more normal, I don't want to say normal, but just, I don't know, it just gave me an experience with social life that I may not have had if I knew I was autistic. Um, Meaning you would probably be kind of treated differently, right? If people right. knew you from the start that you're on the spectrum. Yeah, like, I mean, I always thought I was just really a shy person and everything. But um, 
turns out a lot of the shyness was because I just didn't have the social skills that come with autism. But um, the fact that I didn't know I was autistic growing up, it gave me the chance to try to grow with a social, with, with a social life that mm -hmm. other autistic people may not have because, I mean, I did, I think you saw my documentary, I did an interview with Temple Grandin yeah. and a big part of that is not letting my autism define me or mm -hmm. not for other autistic teenagers, kids, adults, whatever, just not letting that be your defining thing in your life. Yeah. First and foremost, I'm a filmmaker and yes, I'm also autistic, but um, I think ultimately I would have rather been diagnosed when I was younger. Okay. Um, because it would have answered a lot of unknown questions. Um, I would have been able to get the proper, um, I would have been able to get the proper support at a young age. I didn't start therapy till I was 21 or 22. And even at that point, we didn't know I was autistic. And mm -hmm. um, I was just dealing with a lot of depression and my psychiatrist at the time knew there was more to it. but. Yeah, I can see how being diagnosed at a young age could be tough because you don't get to, you start to let your diagnosis define you. But at the same time, I would have much rather gotten the help I needed at a young yeah. age because it would have helped kept me out of my huge depression and the 10 years of rock bottom that I was yeah. at. Meet Elliot. He's a three and a half year old diagnosed with autism six months ago. Before his diagnosis, he could only say 15 words. He started using Speech Blubs, a speech development app, almost every day. Fast forward, and now Elliot can speak well over 100 words and even uses two to three words together. His parents are thrilled, especially since speech therapy sessions are so few and far between. What an amazing success story! Way to go, Elliot! Now it's your turn! Download Speech Blubs for free and start expanding your child's vocabulary from the comfort of your own home. And like it was obviously like when I saw it in the film, it was obviously also stressful for your parents, right? Um, Very stressful. Yeah. Mm, but yeah, go ahead. Yeah, it was very hard on my parents. Um, I dealt with some addiction issues um, that are talked about in the film. It's yeah. okay. I talked about <laughs> um, I I had alcoholism, mm. and um, I'm I turned ten years sober on April seventh this year. Yeah. And um, congratulations! Thank you. So, um. <laughs> Give me a second. I'm going to have to put him in the. I mean, I wouldn't mind if you show, showed us your friend there. Oh, yeah. I'll show um, you. Uh, Tupac, come here. Yeah. He's a pretty big star from the documentary. <laughs> so, this is my best friend, Tupac. Um, I named him after Tupac Shakur. <laughs> um, his name is Tupac Barkor. Okay. Um, and how long yeah. has he been with you? He's been with me for. Oh, it'll be two years on October 5th. Okay. And um, he's not a s licensed service dog or anything, okay. but um, he's my own personal uh, service dog. A, com he, a, com a completely regular dog. Yeah. He can, he can pick up on my mood swings and everything. Oh, and, awesome. And um, he's just my best companion and best friend. So, um it's been really nice having him because yeah. I lost my other dog a few oh, years ago okay. and that was difficult, but um, it's been a great addition to have two boss. So <laughs> yeah, uh, I mean, I'm a dog owner myself, so I know like all the benefits of having a furry friend uh, by your side. So I definitely agree. And he looks super cool <laughs> he is. watching uh, outside, observing the <laughs> neighborhood. Um, Great. Um, and so as we were speaking, like you mentioned, there were a lot of like bad things happening to you, like bad situations, but like, right. do you think, I mean, you mentioned that you would rather be diagnosed, right? But 
I it's would have good. much rather been diagnosed yeah. early. Than early, late. yeah, yeah. Uh, but uh, do you feel like do you feel like this also shaped you into a person you are now and gave you like all this experience that you could put into, for example, your documentary and make it such a great and inspiring story after all? I do. I mean, it's just part of my story to um, a big part of my story is it's just about hardship, perseverance and hope. And um, I was bullied as a younger kid and basically most of elementary school through my junior year of high school. And um, a big reason that I just, I just wanted to fit in with people to mm -hmm. stop the bullying and stuff. And it stopped eventually. But um, I think for me, being that I was diagnosed later, it taught me to hang out with other people that aren't autistic or neurotypical and yeah. uh, gave me just, yeah, it helped me from a younger age make it so I didn't want my diagnosis to define me. Yeah. And um, then... Um, so so was that, like, was the diagnosis then a huge, like, turning point for you? Like, did it make, like, a lot of things clear or easier or...? Um, yeah, it was a big turning point because all of a sudden I could get the proper therapy I needed, the proper treatment. And um, one of the things I struggled with when I was at rock bottom was self-harm. Mm -hmm. And um, so I had to take what they call um, dialectical behavioral therapy or DBT. And okay. I did that for a long time. And um, I ended up finding Come on, buddy. I ended up, <laughs> I ended up finding um, coping skills that worked for mm -hmm. me to help with those thoughts. And um, yeah, I just um, hey, you're gonna have to leave. Sorry. <laughs> Come here. All right. So. <laughs> Yeah, I did DBT for a long time. And one thing I learned with any sort of therapy or um, just coping skills um, is to not feel like I need to learn everything. Um, just to soak in what sticks with me the most. Use the skills that work best for me. And... Because in a class like DBT, it's a big, like, 300-page book, and there's tons of stuff, mm -hmm. but there are probably seven to ten skills I use the most that help me. And um, I think a big turning point, too, was just finding out I was autistic answered a lot of unknown questions with why I struggled socially and yeah. why... I, um, why I just reacted differently to things or more intensely to things than other people did or why I reacted less intensely to things. Um, mm. it, as an autistic person, um, my therapist, John Garson, has worked with myself and my parents and as well as others around me. And um, he just said the thing with autism is people can react very intensely with like meltdowns and stuff or mm -hmm. there's other times where a significant event happens and everyone ar around me reacts very emotionally and it doesn't even phase me. Mm -hmm. So um, I think the best way he's put it to help my parents understand autism is um, there is nothing wrong with me. The only difference is I'm just wired differently than yeah. a typical person. Yeah. Mm, and like, so basically we can sum up, like we can say that like early intervention is 
quite important in situations like that, right? Um, would you would you have like any advice for the parents in terms of that? Like, is it? Um, I don't know. I don't even know how to like when to start. I mean, obviously we know when to start. Maybe not worrying, but just kind of observing that your child reacts reacts differently or uh, acts differently. Um, but is there any like kind of a guidelines that you would give, like in short, or just an advice in terms of that? I think I can't give exact advice, but I would say early intervention is very important. Um, and because autism is one of the just it's one of the biggest diagnoses mm -hmm. right now of the decade, and um, it is much, you can get kids diagnosed very young these days. And um, so if you see some symptoms, like the maybe their communication is delayed, mm -hmm. they're not getting any eye contact, no lack of facial expression. Um, a big one is not even, just non-communicative, not even yeah. talking. So... If any of those show up, I would highly suggest talking to a therapist and mm -hmm. or a psychologist and going from there and seeing what they would suggest. Yeah. This is like my personal experience. I mean, I, obviously, it's rather limited, but still, I feel like um, children or like people on autism spectrum, they're usually like they're usually super smart in certain mm -hmm. areas. Uh, the most of them lack social skills, as you said. Um, they have trouble communicating with the environment, uh, with the with other people and stuff like that. So basically, kind of okay. Now my dog is yeah. <laughs> being loud there. So basically, kind of recognizing this early on, you can just kind of guide them into the right direction to kind of fulfill their full potential later on in the future, right? In this way. Yeah. Okay. Great. Um, Blue, <laughs> sorry, yeah, she probably saw something on TV. Yeah. Um, okay, let's let's go to maybe less inspired, but still hugely inspiring, but more positive. Um, so yeah. I want to talk about photography and filmography. Uh, yeah. This is a huge passion of yours. Um, tell me how it all started. Has it been like? Has it been something that you kind of chased from from your childhood? Did you kind of get into it by, by chance, or how did it all start? Um, I've been doing filmmaking and photography since 2003 and 2004. Okay. Um, I took a photo class in my high school, or at my high school, and at the time it was on black and white film, and um, this was before all the digital stuff, so... Um, we ended up, I did that and really enjoyed it. And then the next year, my senior year, um, I, I was at a school for learning disabilities um, mm -hmm. called Denver Academy. And um, this was long before I was diagnosed with autism. I was diagnosed with... Um, central auditory processing disorder so that's why i went there okay. and i was in a division of the school where um it was less about getting ready for like some huge um college mm -hmm. it was more about getting ready for real life and potentially community college or just going about your everyday life after mm -hmm. high school and one of the things we got to do is these projects called Passages. And each quarter we got to come up with our own project. And one quarter I decided to um, create my own ski movie of my friends and I. And we just took turns filming one another. And um, at the time I thought I just wasn't good with computers. And so my friend, Garrett ended up editing the video for me. Mm -hmm. But um, then the next year when I went to a community college up near Aspen, um, I decided to make another ski movie. And at this point, I'm like, I better just learn how to edit and stuff. 
And then it turned out I had a natural talent for it and I was far better than even Garrett was. And <laughs> um, from there on out, I decided I wanted to pursue film. And so I went to film school for almost three semesters before I had to drop out with mental health. But um, my very first project in film school everyone else's project was just basically the exact same. And mm -hmm. then when he, when he came to my project, I'm just like, oh, I really screwed this one up. Like mine is no, no, nowhere near the same as everyone mm -hmm. else's. And then he paused my project in the middle and I'm just like, oh, <laughs> this is not good. And then the teacher said, class take note, this project right here is better than any of our graduate students. <laughs> And from that, from that day forward, I became that guy that everyone wanted on, in on their projects. <laughs> and um, then I had to drop out of film school because of mental health, but I ended up um, sticking with film. And I've had, I did, most of it was in action sports at this time, you know, with street films and everything. And the and over time, it went over to other action sports, and now it's made its way into documentary work. I wanted to make a difference with my filmmaking and bring mental health and autism acceptance. And um, yeah, just I love documentary work now, and yeah. I really love being able to tell a story and um, help others out. So, um, that's where I'm at today. Awesome. Um, so let's talk about your documentary. It's like autism, one man's journey. Um, I know I read somewhere you described it kind of a memoir of your life. Um, yeah. the main idea is from what I like when I saw it is obviously raising awareness about the problem or the problem about late di diagnosis and more than that, it's kind of an inspirational story of how you can still succeed <coughs> along with all the kind of a hurdles that you face in your life. Um, mm -hmm. One thing I was really amazed by is about all the shots, all the, about all the scenes in the, in the documentary. Um, tell me about it. Like, uh, first of all, the idea, did you kind of, did it kind of came up to you and you started making a documentary or it kind of the idea grow along the way while you were like shooting your friends, uh, skiing, uh, how did that kind of evolve in the beginning? So originally I, the plan was to film other autistic adults to bring awareness and acceptance. Mm, okay. to it. And then I was like, well, maybe I'll have a small part in it and show something. <laughs> and then before I knew it, it became a whole memoir about yeah. my life. And I got very vulnerable with this project. And the reason I opened up so much was I want to give other families and other parents or other mm -hmm. autistic people hope. And um, if I have made it through what I've gone through in my life, like other people can surpass their struggles and ha live a fulfilling life as well. And um, yeah, I mean, part of my idea, like I decided, you know, I'm a very respected filmmaker in the ski industry mm -hmm. and people know me from all around the world. And um I was like, I really want to incorporate a ski segment somehow into this film. Mm -hmm. And then I thought, how do I do this? Like, I could just interview my friends. And then it, then it came to me. Why don't we showcase myself filming and then jump to my camera angles of what, I, what I'm envisioning? And um, so I had a friend or a couple friends follow me along. And I just told my ski friends that I'm like, you're going to think this is weird having someone follow <laughs> along filming me, filming you. Mm -hmm. But I'm like, just trust me on this. And then when they saw the segment, they were all blown away by it. I think it, it was brilliant. Like, I mean, first of all, you have so many great friends. Uh, it was a joy listening to them. Um, basically, um, nothing like, like, 
talking about how it really was, right, with, with you, with everything, with the autism and everything. Uh, but most of all, yeah, I was really amazed about the idea because generally, like when you watch a documentary, is it, it's what you said, right? It's just people filming other people telling telling stuff, right? But here, you kind of like it kind of drew me into it right away because it's a a really nice mixture of your personal story, um, your friends, like your friends' point of view, then your parents and everything, and it just becomes becomes a nice mashup of basically everything and when you like when you watch the whole documentary you get a really nice picture of like everything that has happened to you everything that kind of created you the way you are um so yeah i think it, it it was just brilliant for me to watch it and i was really 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 happy to see it yeah yeah i i really wanted i because it was a documentary about because the documentary also turned into a memoir about myself, yeah. I had to figure out a way to film it because I filmed it, I directed it, I edited it, I was the main person mm -hmm. in it, and it's like um, most documentaries I see are basically people following one person along yeah. or a group of people and just filming like their daily life um or some some yeah. variation of that but um i did the fact that it was hard for me to film myself like i decided how can i incorporate like artistic shots into it and showcase like my filming style mm -hmm. and um another thing i wanted to do was there are lots of parts like different things talked about in my film and in the 36 minutes, I wanted the film to just flow seamlessly. I didn't want to fade in or fade out of any segment. So it is just one giant story from start to finish mm -hmm. with, and it just flows all together. Yeah, I definitely agree with that. Um, one thing I wanted to touch um, is um, like a topic talk. You you met with Temple Grandin. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know, are you like, are you friends? Like, have you known her beforehand? Um, for those of you who don't know you, I mean, most of the viewers here will probably know, but she's one of the, like the most influential women uh, who is also yes. on autism spectrum. She's a great advocate. Um, she is just an amazing person overall, right? Yeah. So, I did not know Temple before the film. Um, my therapist, John Garson, he had some connections with her because she's been on a couple panels with him. Yeah. So John said, there's a chance we could potentially get her in the yeah. film and I think she would be interested because um, she, the, the big reason she'd be interested in it is I'm a fellow autistic person making a film about it. And um, so we got connected and um, right away, like within two weeks, she scheduled a meeting with me. Yeah. And um, even though it felt like really quick and I didn't have much time to prepare, I wasn't going to decline a meeting with Temple mm. Brandon. And... Um, she even told me like a lot of people um, just she has contacted all the time to do interviews, yeah, obviously. documentaries, um, whatever it may be, um, speeches. And she said a lot of other filmmakers have been in it for the wrong reason. They're they're making the film because it's just another way for them to profit and mm -hmm. they know having Temple Grandin in the film may sell it. Yeah. And um, Temple told me she genuinely wanted to be in my film because um, I was a fellow autistic person making it and I'm talking from my firsthand experience. Um, whereas some of these other companies, all they may know about autism for a documentary is from Wikipedia. Yeah. And um, so, we connected and it was a great interview a little intimidating at first because i was 
talking to Temple Grandin, but then I really opened up. And um, since then, like we've stayed in touch off and on for every couple months or so. And um, yeah, I talked to her recently. I think I talked to her like three weeks ago or something and okay. told her about how my film um, Autism Ability that I made for the short film festival One Best Editor and um, how well things are going with the um, autism documentary mm -hmm. Autism One Man's Journey and it's it's just really cool to have a relationship with Temple and yeah. be able to check in with her every now and then because she's definitely someone I look up to and she's definitely helped retrain my perspective on life because um, I'd be lying if I said there weren't moments in my life where I didn't let my autism and mental health define me mm. but talking to Temple it just reminded me that um, yeah I'm my filmmaking first or my photography first and my autism second and yeah that is the sentence that kind of got stuck in my head uh, yeah when she said it um, really kind of tells the whole story. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, but like from the documentary, it seems like she's pretty tech savvy and has a great sense for photography. Yeah, she um, is really cool to <laughs> hang out with her. And I mean, I don't know many people that can say they just got to sit with Temple and exchange photos and share them on their phone. So that was just a really cool experience. And um, there was plenty more to that interview because I talked to her probably for close to 90 minutes and oh, in, the okay. yeah. in the documentary, there's like a couple of minutes, maybe a couple of minutes. Yeah. So definitely down the road. I plan to like take some of that other footage and put it on my YouTube channel. Yeah. Stuff. But, um, yeah, yeah, you should definitely do that. I mean, even those segments were like really inspiring. And so, yeah, um, okay, so um, you mentioned the Disability Film Challenge, right? You also won an award for it. Can you tell us more <laughs> about it, the award, first of all? And like, maybe what does it mean to you to get this award? Like, is it kind of a confirmation that you're, like, I mean, really good at what you do? Um, and, I mean, obviously it is, right? But, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, so, yeah, it's... It was a film festival or film challenge called the Disability Film Festival. And we had four and a half days to, it was a film challenge or disability, it was called the Disability Film Challenge. Mm -hmm. And we had four and a half days to create a short film or a short documentary that was anywhere from one to five minutes long before credits. Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah, I mean, I was like, one day, spur of the moment, I'm like, well, maybe I'll give it a chance. <laughs> and um, then um, I realized, like, one of the awards up for grabs was for best editor. And I've always known I'm a great editor. Mm -hmm. People have told me that. So I'm like, I'm going to put a lot of my focus just on the editing. And I mean... I edited this film for 24 hours in two days. Okay. And um, I mean, it was just, it, it was pretty chaotic because I, once again, I filmed, edited, and directed mm -hmm. and everything. But um, I got it done. And um, one thing I noticed is like a lot of these other groups they have film crews. That was the same thing I've noticed with um, the other documentary um, when I was in film festivals is these people have huge crews and it stands out to people when they see that I did everything because it's like my work is as good or better than some of these other crew members that just focus on one thing and that's part of my talent. And definitely in the future, I plan on working with crews other crews it just takes a lot of the pressure off but um i mean with autism ability i decided i mean it was a film challenge for disabilities i'm like i want to 
make this a positive thing. I don't mm -hmm. want to talk about the hardships and the difficulties in autism. I mean, of course I have struggles with autism, yeah. but I want to also focus on what it's given me. And one thing it's given me is my talent for film. Mm -hmm. And so that's what I focused on and wanted to show people just how, um, how, ta uh, how good at film I am because of my autism. For instance, part of autism is hyper focus, and I'm able to focus on like editing for hours on end without even getting up. And um, it's taught me to view the world differently than other neurotypical people. So, um, and in the end, when I won, I was just really excited and shocked and it there's going to be a lot of opportunities that come of this and it's probably just going to kickstart my career and um let's see this is the oh cool that's the trophy i got awesome so that's just really cool and um yeah, it feels really good to be recognized by people. Yeah. And um, this year was really cool with the Disability Film Challenge because two of the three winners um, for the different categories were autistic people. So, <laughs> Interesting. Um, yeah, yeah, that was really cool. Yeah. yeah, and it's really nice. I feel like, I mean, especially nowadays when just having a talent doesn't kind of guarantee you you can do that for the rest of your life or you can put a focus on it right so getting an award like this definitely helps you right it opens a lot of the gates for you to continue doing what you love to continue creating this awesome content uh in the future right yeah and one thing i also was talking to my friend martha about the other day yep is um with my passion for film like it's definitely becoming a career now. I have another film shoot later this week for a documentary in Denver and oh, awesome. other things are coming up. And um, one thing I can say is like, what's awesome for me, like I had a kind of a rough weekend last weekend, but mm -hmm. then I got to come into yesterday with another film shoot and mm -hmm. Um, honestly, like it can be a little stressful, but also filmmaking is my passion in life. Yeah. And it's also one of my main coping skills to help distract me from all the struggles. So, um, I was just saying to Martha that I don't think there's many people out there that can say that their career is also like a coping skill for them. Yeah. Okay. So, um, we're going to kind of slowly bring it to a close here um i think it's been a great conversation um you you kind of talked about it but like what are your plans for the future obviously you probably have a few projects coming along the way um is like documentary something you want to stay it is there like any other like type of film that you want to kind of pursue or like what are kind of a you know the ideas going through your mind for the future um i plan to stick with documentary for our quite a while now yeah. I definitely have some different stories I want to tell and um, work with other people and then um, I see myself also just to help me with um, making a steady income and stuff yeah. is, um, getting into things like commercial work and doing stuff whatever it might be like real estate videos I might film homes on the side to help market them I could see myself getting into wedding videos um, I would just want to figure out some people to work with because being in a wedding situation as an autistic person might be to be a bit overwhelming but yeah. <laughs> when it comes to the editing I would have no problem so trying to network with someone where they do the filming, I do the editing. And um, I can definitely see how like the newlyweds would get like an awesome material out of it once you edited it. I mean, if yeah. it would be anywhere near the shots in the documentary. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. 
yeah and um yeah i i want to work towards um finding an internship or part-time job with a local production company in the denver yeah. or boulder area where i can do editing for them and have like more of a steady like part-time job on the side with them and then be able to work on my own personal documentaries and other projects on the side mm. well i definitely wish you the best of luck with that um i have no doubt you're going to be successful with it yeah, thank um you. and obviously thank you so much for joining me um it's been a great conversation uh, maybe one thing to add, like me and Spela, you know, Spela, we were talking uh, through the emails and you were having a conversation with her before, but we kind of brainstormed if for this podcast, we would have a silly question for the end for each guest to just kind of make it like a little bit of a kind of a fun, maybe, maybe, maybe make a compilation in the future. Um, yeah. So, I, I mean, I don't know, like I didn't even find any too much funny questions but maybe if i would have to ask you some a funny thing is like if you, if there was one food you would have to eat for the rest of your life what would it be i would probably say pizza <laughs> great answer i, I can't disagree with that <laughs> um so yeah scott thank you so much for being my guest um I hope we'll talk in the future i'm, I'm pretty sure we will um uh, there are some opportunities we want to follow we want to discuss um, maybe we get you on the podcast again uh, the next time you're, you're going to win an award for your film. <laughs> um, and yeah, for everyone else, thank you for being here. Um, if you are not yet following us, please do follow us on Instagram, Facebook. It's at Speech Bluffs. And till next time. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in. Make sure to like, share, and subscribe for more content like this. Follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and Pinterest at SpeechBlubs. Visit our website, speechblubs.com, for more information on speech development created by experts. Last but not least, download the SpeechBlubs app to explore how you can improve your child's speech with us.